All right, now I'm going to show how to import the particle asset package and modify an explosion to fit this game. So to do that, you go up to Assets, Import Package, and Particles. This will bring up a menu, and you can choose to import all of these or just a few that you want. There are quite a few. Um, sparks, snow, bubbles, smoke, all sorts of things. So I've imported all of them for now and then I will delete the ones I don't use. I st started off with the small explosion and I'll show you what these settings look like now and this is a continual explosion in fire so I don't want that. Um, but let me slide this over to the right a little bit and let's change some of these settings so you can see how they work. Now because I've dropped uh, this prefab into the hierarchy it's a separate prefab, separate object, so I can change this one without changing the original. I'm gonna go down here and first of all I want to make sure that uh, there are no gravity looking effects in here and I can see that the explosion is going up in the y direction that tells me something is pushing it up. That's found here in force so I would want to set this to zero. The explosion is really big still so I need to keep looking for other settings to make it smaller. Now the random force is here I don't want any for now so I'm going to zero <coughs> those out check all these other settings local rotation access all zeroed world rotation zero okay I'm gonna leave all these other particle animator settings so this is what gives it all the orange and white look and I want to keep it that way for now so to stop it from being a continual explosion I check this one shot here and what that looks like now is it just repeats what one will look like over and over. Let's slide this over to the right a bit more. Okay, random rotation, that would be okay with me. Um, these ellipsoid settings here are the shape of the volume where the particle, um, each individual particle is created. So I want to change these so that it's not always the same shape in X, Y, and Z, but say you give it a 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and a 0.05. So give it a triaxial nature, and then when I give it this random rotation, then it's going to change the, um, the shape that it looks like every time. So it's not quite going any, any different orientation now, so let's change some of these settings and make it more obvious here. Tangent velocities are all zeroed. Random velocities don't want any. Okay, so local velocities zero. World already zeroed. And then these settings up here for size, energy, and emission. These are really important for how it looks. So I'm going to start changing some of these and watching how um, this changes the explosion. So min size, I want to lower the minimum and what I want is to have some kind of an explosion left over maybe sometimes. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm also looking for how long the explosion is going to be on screen. So size, I can play with this. Okay, That's smaller, maybe that's a little bit too small. Energy, this is how long in seconds the explosion is going to stay on screen. So if I want it to be shorter, lower the minimum, lower the maximum. And remember we're going to have a lot of explosions on the screen with tons of enemies. And then mini mission. I'll just change this to something lower for now. Okay, so this is 
uh, what I just created. And I'm going to show you now what I had created before, which is this small explosion, and I named it Modified. So I'm going to drop it into the hierarchy. And it looks like it's a little faster still. I'm going to move this guy over to the left a bit. Minus three. And now I need to show some tags that I've added. And I'm going to start with the ship here. Going up to the top of the inspector. Here's the tag. I've given the ship a tag of player. <coughs> And that is one of the standard tags. I've added these bottom three, player bullet, enemy, and enemy bullet. You do that by clicking on add tag. And then where you see element zero, you start typing in a new name here. And then it gives you an extra uh, space to keep on adding. So the next time I add one, I'll type it in here. and It'll give me an element four if I want to keep on going. And these tags are important because in game, I'm going to go over to the script now. This is the enemy one script. At the very top, you'll see that I have created a variable explosion. It's a game object. And I use that um, to instantiate that explosion that I just created. But you'll notice from a previous video where I had the switch working on the other dot game object dot name, I have changed it now so that the <clears throat> colliding object, um, which is uh, the other variable here. I'm going to look for the tag. So I'm going to say, well, if you are a player or if you're a player bullet, then I want to create an explosion and then destroy the game object. And this means the enemy because this is the enemy one script. So let's go back into Unity and see what this looks like. I'm going to take out these two explosions here. And let's see, the enemy one needs to have an explosion on it. So you'll see this explosion variable in the enemy one script. And I have attached small explosion modified to that. So let's click on play. And when these enemies come out, I'll try to separate these explosions here so you can see that they're a little bit different randomly. And the whole point here is to make sure that they look nice in size and how long they're on the screen. And I like to have a little uh, bit of randomness in there. And I especially love it when I get one that has uh, a really fast explosion or you can see a, a little core explosion when the rest of it fades. Alright, there you go.